Hi guys, welcome to another video. I wanted to do another video on the FreeSky D4R2 because it is such a popular receiver for multi-rotor flying. There's also something that's even mentioned by the manufacturer. Um, if we just have a look in the manual here, you'll see that it says at the bottom of the manual, CPPM channel cannot handle all eight channels at the same time with all throws maxed out as it does not have enough frame gap. It is recommended to use at most six channels from CPPM channel while leaving off the last two channels, otherwise improper performance might occur. Now also, FreeSky have released a firmware which is the 27 millisecond firmware and if we have a look at the documentation for that you can see here that uh, the firmware here is a 27 millisecond frame length so let's just have a look here on the stock firmware it's an 18 millisecond frame gap as it says here and on the updated firmware it is a 27 millisecond frame gap now, what does that all mean and do you need to worry about it? First, so that you can understand exactly what all these drawings mean, I'm going to hook up a D4R2 to my oscilloscope which will allow me to measure voltage changes over time. And that's exactly what this drawing is. It's voltage changes over a time period of either 18 milliseconds or 27 milliseconds. If you imagine that the bottom of this graph is zero volts, then the top of this graph is actually 3.3 volts. And very quickly, the voltage on the CPPM pin that you connect to your flight controller from the D4R2 changes from zero volts to 3.3 volts. Now, this happens super quickly and this is the way that the information is sent. To make it a little bit clearer, let's go and have a look on the oscilloscope. Okay guys, so I have just set up my Tyrannus so that the four analog knobs, one, two, three, four, are mapped to channels five, six, seven, and eight, just so that you can see how the channel data affects the PPM signal on the scope. You notice here that uh, you can see basically a bunch of 3.3 volt pulses that are being output and you can see on the left I have put a cursor and then on the right I've put another cursor which is uh, 18 milliseconds away from the first one. Now 18 milliseconds is the frame length of the PPM signal on the D4R2 at its default. I'm going to try and explain to you what the problem is and why they say you need to reflash to a, another firmware in order to use the full eight channels. Each of these pulses on the oscilloscope represents one channel. So if I push the thrust up, you can see that channel four, the pulse is getting wider or longer in time. And when I pull it back down again, it gets thinner. Now, if I use the rudder, you can see that channel three is getting smaller and then back to the mid position and then at the full position. If I use the aileron, you can see channel one is getting smaller, back to the mid position, full. If I use the pitch, you can see again, full, center, minimum. The important thing to look at here, from this point to this point is the frame length. Now, how does your flight controller, NASA, whatever board you're using know which one is channel one? How does it know where does the frame length start? And the way that it knows is it's looking for this one large pulse at the end. It sees the large pulse at the end, then the gap between pulses, and then it knows that the next one is for channel one. Now, what happens if I just wind up all the channels? So here's channel five to full. Here's channel six to full. Here's channel seven to full. And here is channel eight to full. 
Now I put my throttle to full. I put my rudder to full. And you can see that that end gap is starting to become close to indistinguishable from the actual channel pulses. Now I put my pitch to full. And now look what happens when I put the aileron to full, the last channel that's not on full. You can see that even my oscilloscope can't tell the trigger point for the start of the frame. And it's hunting for that trigger point right now. If I bring one of the channels back, all of a sudden it can find the start point again. So this is the problem. With eight channels running, you cannot put all channels to full Otherwise, the flight controller loses its ability to be able to tell where is channel one or the beginning of the frame. So hopefully that makes it pretty clear. Now in the manual for the D4R2, they actually say that uh, you can only use six channels in PPM mode safely, but you know, I can prove that you can quite easily use seven channels. There's no problem there. It's just when you push that eighth channel to full, there's not enough length in the frame to distinguish the synchronization pulse at the beginning. This would be a problem if you were using stick control or analog control on every channel. But with a multi-rotor, we're never doing that. Even if you have, let's say, uh, your standard four flight controls with your throttle, rudder, aileron and pitch, even if you wanted to add, say, a gimbal tilt, or a gimbal pan, then that's only six channels and you still do have channel seven and channel eight free, which you could use for, let's say, an arm switch and a mode switch. However, we know that even if it was switches, when the switches are all in the full position and all your other sticks are in the full position, you're gonna run into a problem with the frame length as I demonstrated earlier. So now we understand how it works, but what exactly does that mean? How does that affect us flying a multi-rotor? Well, let's pull up the calculator and do some simple math. With the stock firmware, we've got a period of 18 milliseconds. And obviously there's a thousand milliseconds in a second. So if we divide one second by 18, we can see that this frame happens 55.5 times every second. It's repeating over and over again. 55 and a half times a second. And what that means is that what you are physically doing on your controller is being updated to your flight controller 55 times a second. Now, if we change from the stock firmware to the extended frame period firmware, all of a sudden this changes to one second divided by 27 you can see it's now only being updated 37 times per second. Now, you might think that it's not that much of a difference, but think about what the difference is between when you're playing 37 frames per second FPS shooter and a 60 frame per second FPS shooter. There actually is a noticeable difference. So obviously, if we can, it's best for us to find a way to retain all the functionality that we need while staying on the faster stock firmware. So I thought about this and to me the answer was quite simple and I hadn't seen anybody else sort of explore it or discuss it. So I'm gonna take you guys through the solution that I came up with. So let's go to the mixer section and let's edit channel seven so that it becomes, for example, switch A. And let's edit channel eight. So that it becomes switch D. If we have a look back on our oscilloscope, you will see that when we put switch D down and switch A down and all our channels to full, Again, we run into the problem of we lose our trigger point for the start of the frame. But when you consider that 
the switch only needs to be in three positions. And we only need to be able to tell which position that switch is in. And to do that, we actually don't need to use the full resolution of the switch. And by that, I mean, you can go into your servo settings. So here we are with uh, switch D. It's labeled incorrectly, but it is switch D. Now I can go to our max value and wind that down. We can wind it all the way down. And now you can see that pulse, even when the switch is all the way down, it's never actually going to full. So now in the full mode, it's no different to the mid position. And you might think that that's a problem. But actually, we can just go to our sub trim. So we can just go to our sub trim, which is basically like the midpoint of the switch and bring it down. And you can even see here on the Tyrannus, it's telling you how many microseconds it is. And that will actually line up with how many microseconds is being displayed on the scope. So now you can see on the oscilloscope, the last channel, we're still getting three distinct switch positions. But even when it's down on the third position, the channel width is never going to full. So if I just you can see what a, what the full channel widths look like there and looking on the last channel it's never going to full and I can have everything wound up to the maximum position including this switch and we're still triggering on the beginning of the frame. So this is a great little hack that allows you to keep the original 18 millisecond per frame firmware on the D4R2. So obviously there is an advantage to keeping the faster 18 millisecond firmware. And this little hack is a great way to do it.